Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to explore a new approach to large digit multiplication. It's called partial products. Uh, we are in our math journal right now, uh, starting on page 119, but we'll also be on pages 120 and 121. This is unit 4, lesson 6. So let's take a look at the math message on page 119. It says, Helen wants to paint the sidewalk for her block party. She needs to know the area of the sidewalk so she'll know how much paint to buy. The sidewalk is 5 feet wide and 660 feet long. What is the area of Helen's sidewalk? So as a reminder, if you recall, the formula for figuring out the area of a rectangle is length times width. So we know that the length of this uh, sidewalk is 660 feet by 5 feet. So we're going to multiply 660 times 5. So this is draw a picture to represent Helen's sidewalk. Now, that's an extremely long and skinny rectangle. It would look something like this, and it is not the scale. length is 660, and the width is 5. So if I were to use partitioning rectangles to figure it out, this is what I would do. I would take a rectangle, I would split it up into three boxes, because 660 is a three-digit number. 660 is 600 plus 60 plus no ones. Okay, and I'm going to multiply each part by 5. 5 times 6 gives me 30. And 5 times 6 with two zeros is going to give me 30 with two extra zeros, otherwise known as 3,000. And I'm going to repeat the process with 60 or 6 with 1 0, that's going to give me 300. And then, of course, 5 times 0 is 0. So now that I've separated out my uh, different place values, I need to add together those two uh, products that I came up with, and that gives me a total product of 3,300 feet. 3,300 feet. Square. Because we're talking about squares of feet that would cover the inside of this extremely long uh, rectangle here, which is the sidewalk. Now, if you take a look at the partitioning rectangle uh, approach here. One of the steps that you take in order to solve the problem is that you take the different products that were determined in each of the boxes within the rectangle, the partitioning rectangle, and then you add them together. In this next approach that we're going to look at, at, partial products, we basically think about a number and we break it apart into its different place values and we multiply uh, the different parts of the number by the other factor and then we add the partial products together like we do in the partitioning rectangle. The only difference is that when we approach this problem, we don't set up the partitioning rectangle. We just remember that a multi-digit number is made up of different place values, and we do all the calculations in and around the algorithm itself. I'll explain. The second problem here, it says the mayor wants to beautify part of the highway by planting marigolds. She wants to plant four marigolds along every foot of highway for an entire mile, or 5,280 feet. 
how many marigolds will she need? Well, the problem here is 5,280 times 4. So because for every foot of highway, she wants to plant 4 marigolds along an entire mile. Okay? So again, if I approach this problem partition rectangle style, I'm going to create a rectangle. And this time it's going to have four parts because 5,280 feet has four place values. So 5,280 and zero. I'm going to multiply each of those parts by four. So 5 times 4 is 20, and since 5,000 is 5 with 3 zeros, 5 times 4 is going to give me 20 with 3 zeros, or 20,000. 4 times 200 is 800, or 8 with 2 zeros. 4 times 80 is going to give me 320, or 32, with one zero. And of course, four times zero is going to be nothing. So, I've taken those four place values, and I multiplied them each by four. Now i got to add them all together. So, down below my rectangle, I'm going to set up an addition problem of 20,800. 320 and 0. And then since we know 0 is not going to give us anything, we're not even going to bother. So now I just have to add my place values. 0 plus 0 plus 0. 0 plus 0 plus 2. 8 plus 3 gives me 11. So you got to carry the 1. Bring that one down. As well as the, uh, the 20 and the 20,000. So my total is now 21,120. Now, if I were to take the partial products approach to this problem, I'm going to do basically the same thing I did here with partitioning rectangles, except I'm not going to include a rectangle. What I am going to do is I'm going to set up the algorithm like you would see it normally, 5,280 times 4. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remember that 5,280 is 5,000 and 200 and 80 and a 0. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply each of those parts by 4. So, as you just saw in the previous example, 5,000 times 4 is going to give me 20,000. 200 times 4 is going to give me 800. 80 times 4 is going to give me 320. And, of course, 0 times 4 is 0. As you can see, I've just done all the calculations that I did in the previous example, except I lined them up horizontally. Uh, one calculation to the next. And by doing so, and by writing my numbers uh, according to their place value, I've also set up my addition product problem vertically. So that I can then do all the calculations right next to my products, and I get the same answer. So as you can see, partial products contains all the same steps as partitioning rectangles. The only difference is the visual component isn't uh, as obvious. Okay. 
what you have to do is you have to remember that 5,280, or any number really, is made up of more than one place value. And when you are approaching uh, multiplication of a large digit number, you have to break it down into its parts. Now that you know partitioned rectangles as a strategy, you can apply it towards partial products. You just have to remember to break down the parts. So let's try a problem together. Problem number one. It says draw a partition rectangle to represent the problem. Then use partial products uh, to record your work in a simpler way. So the problem here is 54 times 7. So as a partition rectangle, I would write 54, 50, plus 4, times 7. And I'm going to multiply 7 times 5, which is going to give me 350, or 35 tens. And then 7 times 4 is 28. And I'm going to take 350 and 28 and add them together. It gives me 378. So that's my total. When I approach it this way, I remember that 54 is 50 and 4. And then I'm going to multiply each of those digits within this number by the other factor, which is 7. I'm just going to set up my algorithms sideways, 50 times 7 is 350, 4 times 7 is 28, and voila, I get the same answer. And that's the difference between partitioned rectangles and partial products. Okay, It's just another way of thinking about or approaching uh, multiplication. So you have a number of problems that you are asked to try. The number two asks you to use partial products and partitioned rectangles. But then problems three through six ask you just to try the new method on your own. And you're going to notice that you see some three and four digit number problems. Well, as you've uh, just seen demonstrated, um, if you break down each number into its individual place values, you can do the math. It's that simple. You just got to remember all the steps. Okay. I have every confidence that you'll be able to do it this way. Uh, but if you don't, uh, or if you have questions on this method, uh, please talk to your math teacher. Okay. Otherwise, uh, we will talk again soon, friends. Thanks, and good luck.